Hi, my name is Serena and every morning I like to make a fresh cup of coffee. However, recently I discovered I really don't know much about it, so I've decided to go on a journey to find out more. Coffee is a beverage with a strong flavour prepared from the roasted seeds of the coffea plant. It is one of the most consumed beverages in the world. The beans are cultivated in over 70 countries. Green unroasted coffee is one of the most traded agricultural commodities in the world. I wanted to know how coffee is made, so I travelled to Salento in Colombia to find out more. Colombian coffee has been recognised worldwide as having high quality and a distinctive taste. For Colombians, coffee is not merely a bean, but a part of their national identity. In fact, coffee growing is the largest source of rural employment in the country. Nestled in the foothills of the Andes, near the town of Armenia, Salento is in the heart of the Colombian coffee country. I went to see Timothy at Finca Don Eduardo to find out how coffee is grown. Welcome to Finca Don Eduardo. It's called Don Eduardo because I'm Timothy Edward and Don Timoteo didn't sound very Colombian, so we went with Don Eduardo. 300,000 coffee farms in Colombia. There's a lot of coffee farms in Colombia. Now the average size is very small, two to three hectares. This farm, by comparison to most, is quite large. This farm is 7 hectares officially, 12 unofficially. Now the difference between the official and the unofficial measurement, the official measurement is flat on a map. The unofficial measurement is when you walk it, so you get a lot more land. Uh, coffee was introduced into Colombia uh, in the 1730s, into Santa Marta, and from there it spread throughout Colombia. Everyone in Colombia grows Arabica coffee. There's no Robusta grown here. Robusta coffee, not a very good coffee, lots of caffeine, not so much taste, and you usually grow Robusta coffee at low level and where there's no frost. Now, Arabica coffee is a more complicated plant, and Arabica coffee needs certain conditions to grow. Obviously, you don't grow Arabica coffee where there's frost. None of the coffees like frost. But aside from that, you grow Arabica coffee typically um, at altitude, usually between 1,200 and 1,600 metres in altitude. You grow it between the tropics, the two tropics, Tropic Capricorn, Tropic of Cancer, the middle belt of the earth. You grow Arabica coffee, uh, you want one or two wet seasons a year, and you want good volcanic soil. So given those criteria, you can grow yourself Arabica coffee. About one third of the world's trade is Robusta, about two thirds is Arabica. There are lots of different types of Arabica coffee. They're called varietals, there's over a hundred of them. So the varietals of Arabica coffee fit into two categories. Okay, you've got traditional Arabica coffees, they've been around a long time. You've got modern Arabica coffees, they haven't been around a long time. Now the moderns are hybrids, the moderns have been developed in a lab. Most people in Colombia these days are growing the modern types of Arabica coffee. There's a lot of financial attractions in growing modern coffee. Most coffee farms will have uh, more than one variety of Arabica coffee growing on the farm. You spread the risk around. You don't have one variety of coffee, you have various varieties of coffee. So if something's going to come and attack your coffee, you lose some of your coffee harvest, not all of your coffee harvest. Okay, but when they come to pick the coffee, they pick the coffee all together. It doesn't matter if it's modern, traditional, red, orange, they just pick it all together. You pick your coffee cherries when the coffees are red or orange. You can take the skins of the coffee cherries by hand by just simply popping the coffee very, 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 very easily in, ha in your hand. However, it's more common to use a machine called a despopador. Basically, there's a square bar that turns around very, very slowly and a copper drum underneath that that turns around and what's happening is the coffee beans get squeezed between the two. The skins come one side and the coffee beans come the other side. The coffee beans come through and are collected in a sieve. You put your hand in the sieve and move the coffee around and all the beans have been split correctly will go through the slots. All the coffee beans that haven't been split correctly will get recycled and done a second and if necessary a third time. And we're going to take the sugar out of the coffee. Basically the washing, it's a fermentation process, you just soak the coffee in water as you would beans, lentils, rice. The water will get drained away, fresh water will go in. If it changes colour then the coffee's got more sugar to come out. And then keep changing the water on a semi-regular basis until the water stays clear. When the water stays clear, all of the sugar's out. 18 to 72 hours, all the sugar will come out of the coffee bean into the water and a lot of the water has gone into the coffee bean. The first of the quality control checks, any coffee bean that floats on the top of the water is low grade coffee. That's domestic coffee. The water has taken out 
the sugar, now you need to get the water out of the coffee. Getting the water out of the coffee is much easier. What you do is you simply dry the coffee. Now you dry the coffee, but you can dry coffee in an oven. However, it's expensive and it's rather easy to start roasting the coffee by mistake. Most people dry the coffee the traditional way. The traditional way is you put the coffee in the sun and let it dry naturally. That's where most coffee farms stop. You take that sack of coffee along to the local coffee merchant and he will buy it off you. And he will buy it at the uh, standard price uh, for, a, for a, a sack of coffee in Colombia and that gets set twice every working day. Once in the morning and once at lunchtime. It's quoted in US dollars per pound. So we'll do it the artisanal way, so what's going to happen is put the parchment coffee in a grinder, set the, uh, the width of the grinder nice and wide and take the skins off the coffee without damaging the beans. The husk will then get blown away and then what we'll do is we're going to roast, roast the coffee um, the old-fashioned way. So we'll use a wok and it'll just be a question of turning the coffee uh, using a wooden spoon, just turning the coffee. Now basically it's usually a dry roast, you don't add anything to the roast. You need to keep the coffee moving, so typically most people will roast in a drum where the coffee is turning around or they'll roast in a big pot with a mechanical stirrer that keeps the coffee turning around very very slowly. Five to ten minutes the coffee will start popping like popcorn. That's called cracking and basically what happens is the bean is cracking open. And basically at that point in time the coffee is, is starting to cook from the inside out. Now at that point in time you can't stop it cooking. You have to let it cool down and it will keep cooking like a steak will. Part of the magic of roasting coffee is knowing where it is in the roasting cycle so you can start it cooling so it stops at the colour you want. If you wait until you've got the colour you want, you go past it. Now the darker the roast, the more bitter the coffee, and the darker the roast, the less caffeine is in it. Thank you, Timothy. Now I understand where the coffee bean comes from and the processes that are involved in farming it. Here is a quick recap on the growing and cultivating of the coffee. How do I make the perfect cup of coffee? I went to visit Jesus to find out an example of how the Colombians make their coffee. This is the traditional Colombian method of uh, brewing coffee. That's called chocolatera, that's called mochila. Uh, when we are, when we are cooking uh, coffee uh, using a filtering method, we are going to extract uh, a lot of caffeine out of the coffee, but uh, little oils. Uh, the ideal temperature to release the caffeine out of the coffee powder is 60 degrees. So um, the closer uh, the temperature is to 60 degrees, the more content in caffeine we are going to, to achieve. A filter coffee, usually what you do is you measure one uh, spoon of coffee per cup. What you do is you boil the water, but you don't use the water recently boiled. You leave the water standing for one or two minutes, so the water will be down in temperature a little bit. Uh, we do that uh, to avoid a fast reaction with the coffee. It will add a little bit of, of a burnt, burnt taste. The coffee powder and the, and the water in, in contact for a couple of minutes. Obviously, the more the coffee is in contact with the water, the stronger it will get. So that's how the Colombians traditionally make their cup of coffee. But wandering around the streets of Colombia, I also found many different entraptions. Here are just a few other devices that can help make the perfect cup of coffee. With this device, which is called Aeropress, it's a very popular device in the United States. Mm -hmm. 
The filter with pressure devices. It's called mocha in Italy. With water, you fill the tank, the, the distillate with coffee, and you close it up. Coffee is slightly acidic and can have a stimulating effect on humans due to its caffeine content. Many studies have examined the health effects of coffee and whether the overall effects of coffee consumption are positive or negative has been widely disputed. Jesus has some very interesting views on how coffee affects health. One thing you have to understand about coffee is coffee is good. Uh, it's good for so many reasons. It's a natural diuretic, which means your kidneys uh, are going to work more efficiently. Uh, coffee contains uh, a lot, or caffeine contains a lot of um, antioxidants, which means uh, our immune system is going to be better prepared, more uh, more equipped. The so main effect coffee does in our organism is uh, it's, um, it's called vasodilation. So our capillaries, uh, veins, arteries, uh, vessels are going to increase their sizes, making the blood goes faster. That's an advantage and a disadvantage. If you drink uh, between one and four cups of coffee a day, uh, you are okay. I mean, you have a uh, you are not overdoing your system. The problem is when you drink so much coffee, like I do, uh, due to the circulation of the blood, because it's faster, means the pressure is lower. And that's a problem. Looks like uh, for somebody who drinks a cup of coffee a day, or black tea a day, compared to somebody who does not uh, drink, you have a ratio of one to 680 in favor of the coffee drinkers. So it means that uh, it will be unlikely that you may have Alzheimer or Parkinson. This is a study done over 30 years with over 30,000 people. Breast cancer and skin cancer are reduced 50% chances uh, if you are a coffee drinker. Diabetes is reduced 50%. We're talking about the statistics, so this uh, is not necessarily true. I would like to share with you one more thing. There is a tale about the dancing goats. Legend has it, Ethiopian shepherds first noticed the effects of caffeine when they saw their goats appearing to become frisky and dance after eating coffee beans. This, in some eyes, is the beginning of coffee. So there you go, that's the story of coffee in Colombia. I can now appreciate each one of my coffees even more. I hope you can too. Thank you for joining me on this journey. Thank you.